Every wrestler aspires to win championships. Doesn't matter if you're the grandson of a plumber or a satanic undertaker, if you get in the ring, you want the gold by any means necessary. However, at times, some wrestlers have taken matters into their own hands and stolen championship belts. Whether out of spite as a bit of mental chess against the reigning champ, or merely because it seemed like a laugh, a little petty crime can seemingly get you far in this wretched business. I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic Wrestling, and this is 10 Times Wrestlers Stole Championships. Join us. But first, this video is brought to you by WrestleCrate. WrestleCrate partner with some of the biggest stars of the past and present to provide exclusive merch that you won't find anywhere else delivered straight to your door every single month. Better yet, if you use the code CULTAHOLIC24, you will get a very special Black Friday offer. 20 free autographs with a WrestleCrate subscription over your first five deliveries. So sign up today at wrestlecrate.co.uk. The link is in the description below and use code CULTAHOLIC24 now. Enjoy the video. Number 10, Crime Time Commit Crime Say what you want about Crime Time. They may have been rogues and petty criminals, but they were not liars. I mean, their name was literally Crime Time. They weren't hiding their intentions from anybody. At some point, the duo thought, hang on, let's steal the tag titles, realizing at the very least they would get a sanctioned shot at the belt. Unfortunately, this meant that the champs at the time, Cody Rhodes and Ted DiBiase Jr., were made to look like a pair of clowns, with their tag reign at the time hardly the most dominant in company history. Still, the plan worked, with JTG and Shad Gaspard getting a shot at Legacy at Unforgiven 2008. However, there were some miscommunication issues during the bout, which Crime Time lost and just gave up trying to pinch the gold. I mean, if it worked the first time round, you'd surely just do it again, no? Weirdly, Crime Time were the baby faces here because nothing says good guys more than committing an actual felony. In fact, if anything, it built sympathy for Legacy, so yeah, perhaps JTG and Shad were wise to abandon further title thievery plans? Number 9. Jim Duggan Goes Bin Diving During the Vince Russo era of WCW, Jim Duggan was working on screen as a janitor. Compelling television, I'm sure you'll agree. Whilst doing his janitorial rounds backstage in February of 2000, Hacksaw found the WCW World Television Championship in a bin, having been tossed there by Scott Hall and Kevin Nash three months earlier in Denver, which was 1,700 miles away from where Duggan found it in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania? Whatever. Logic was already out the window, so rather than give the belt back to Hall or hand it over to WCW management, Duggan instead kept it for himself. That is theft in my book and defended the title regularly on WCW TV. As champ, Duggan beat the likes of Stephen Regal, Fit Finley, and The Barbarian, and in true Duggan fashion, he never dropped the title, with WCW deactivating the belt instead as they went fully on board with the New Blood vs. Millionaires Club storyline. Number 8. The IC Title Merry-Go-Round Poor Bad News Barrett, all he wanted was to rain on everybody's parade and figure out whom he would put the Intercontinental Championship on the line against at WrestleMania 31. However, seemingly everyone in the midcard saw BNB's title belt and wanted it for themselves, but without winning it officially. In frankly ridiculous scenes, R-Truth, Dolph Ziggler, Dean Ambrose, Luke Harper, Stardust, and even Daniel Bryan all took the belt for themselves, and in doing so were added to a big ladder match for the strap at the show case of the immortals. If it's that easy, then I've half a mind to steal a belt for myself and get that glorious mania payday. Unsurprisingly, this storyline was widely panned because at the end of the day, it's the IC title and WrestleMania. Could we not get a better feud than this? The sun shone on Daniel Bryan on the night itself as the American Dragon retrieved the gold, keeping firm hold of it for a few weeks until he was forced to vacate it due to concussion issues. At least nobody stole it from him, I guess. Number seven, Garcia R. Finches the Dynamite Diamond ring. Maxwell Jacob Friedman is a naughty boy, isn't he? When he's not swearing at his boss or tossing drinks at kids, he's punching people in the face with his dynamite diamond ring. During his reign as 
the self-dubbed AEW American Champion, MJF begrudgingly had to leave his home country for a trip to the miserable United Kingdom, where some swine on our crime-riddled isles only went and nicked it from him. MJF had to resort to using something else when he needed to sneakily spark out Will Ospreay in Wembley Stadium, only to be stopped by Daniel Garcia, with Garcia later admitting that he stole the ring and pawned it off. In reality, the ring had legitimately gone missing, so AEW thought on their feet and came up with a tried-and-true robbery angle. Granted, it didn't really make sense that Garcia stole it in England to fund a trip to England, but it is what it is. And before you kick off and say, actually, Adam, the Dynamite Diamond Ring is not a championship, well, MJF won it fair and square, and it was defended multiple times in sanctioned matches, so shove it up your asses. Number 6. Hammer Time Amongst the many legit reasons that some wrestling fans hold Hulk Hogan in contempt, one is that the Hulkster wasn't keen on losing. Hollywood himself would scoff at this and inform you that he took the L against the genius of all people, and boy did Hogan pay for it. Lanny Poffo got the unlikely win via countout, of course, after Mr. Perfect ran down for a scrap with the world champion during a November 1989 broadcast of Saturday Night's main event. The two thought it best to further mess with Hogan by stealing his most cherished possession and hightailed it to the back with the winged eagle belt. Realizing that Perfect couldn't just walk around saying he was the champ, the two instead smashed the bollocks off the belt with a hammer, shattering the main plate into little pieces. Hogan would get his revenge by receiving a brand new belt and routinely trounced Perfect on the house show loop, whilst WWE would seemingly take inspiration from the ramshackle strap when introducing the hardcore title nearly a decade later. As for the real Smash title, a Announcer Mel Phillips reportedly thought, I'm having that, and took it home for himself. Certainly not the worst thing Phillips took home from a WWE show, allegedly. Number 5. Jake Roberts, Million Dollar Champion Ted DiBiase loved two things, money and money. If you were to push him for a third, he would say his million dollar championship belt, with Ted's diamond encrusted title firmly around his waist when he was in his WWE pomp. Jake Roberts got pretty tired of DiBiase's pomposity and how he made others grovel and beg for his money, so took matters into his own hands, nabbing the title for himself and putting it in with Damien the Snake for safekeeping. Ted was ruddy livid, naturally, as Jake would somehow keep hold of the belt for several months until the two eventually clashed for the unsanctioned strap at WrestleMania 6. Jake was hoping to make Ted wallow in the muck of avarice at Mania, but unfortunately for Roberts, Ted's bodyguard Virgil hopped on him to earn a countout win for the Million Dollar Man. DBRC got his belt back and continued acting like a prick, whilst Jake and Damien ended up sparring with the model Rick Martel, with Martel stealing Jake's eyesight. Fair's fair, you know. Number 4. Austin vs. Rock When you think of Austin vs. Rock, you will likely think of their three WrestleMania clashes, the two biggest stars of a generation fighting to prove who was the best as WWE reached unprecedented heights during the Attitude Era. But a few years prior, the two were embroiled in a feud over the Intercontinental Championship, with the Nation of Domination troublemaker Rocky Maivia stealing Stone Cold's belt just days after Austin won it at Survivor a series 97. Title in hand, cocky brash rock started declaring himself as the best damn intercontinental champion ever as Austin, unsurprisingly, got increasingly pissed off. Fueled by pure anger and with a lovely personalized truck, Austin overcame the nation and defeated rock to regain the belt at Degeneration X in your house, but this drew the ire of Vince McMahon, who ordered Austin to defend it against the rock the next night on Raw. Stone Cold couldn't be asked with this, so forfeited the title and then threw it into a river, a typically calm, measured response from the Texas rattlesnake there. Hey, at least he didn't shine it up real nice and stick it straight up somebody's candy ass like a certain Mr. D. Johnson was prone to doing. Number 3. Don't Cross the Lariat Stan Hansen is one of the most feared in-ring competitors in professional wrestling history, with the legendary brawler known for smashing his opponent's jaws into pieces with his vicious lariats. In his career, Hansen broke Bruno Sammartino's neck, dislodged Vader's eye 
eye out of its socket and left countless challengers wishing they had never crossed his path. So it was therefore a very sensible move by the American Wrestling Association board to get on Stan's bad side whilst he was reigning as AWA World Champ. Depending on who you listen to, Hanson either wanted to be adequately paid by AWA, didn't want to job to perennial champ Nick Bockwinkle, or was not permitted to lose by All Japan head Giant Barber, so left the building ahead of his planned defense against Bockwinkle in June of 1986. The AWA board stripped Stan of the title, but he remained in position of the actual belt, so he just kept it and defended it in Japan. AWA president Vern Garnier instated Bockwinkle as champ with a stand-in belt and threatened Hansen with legal action if he didn't return the gold. Stan played ball, but not before running the belt over repeatedly with his truck and mailing it back to them. Wonder if that violated the warranty. Number two, CM Punk kisses WWE goodbye. It's now time for our obligatory mention of WWE Summer of Punk. Regardless, the elevation of CM Punk in 2011 was one of the biggest moments in WWE for years, with the real-world implications of Punk potentially winning the WWE Championship at Money in the Bank as his contract expired, making for genuinely must-see TV. We all know the story by now. Rabid Chicago crowd, Vince and John Laurinaitis looking worried, a GTS a blown kiss, and our favorite straight-edge curmudgeon leaving the company with the title held high. Punk would go home, pop the belt in the fridge, and then show up wherever he pleased with it, such as Comic-Con and, well, that's about it really. Soon enough, the second City Saint was back in the company with the gold, and it all ended happily ever after with no ill will, lawsuits, or crosswords. Lo and behold, Punk would never again take a leave of absence with a championship belt whilst a promotion had to install a temporary champ. Number one, the real world champion. As the NWA became WCW, Ric Flair stuck with the promotion, with his participation seen as Paramount by Ted Turner before he purchased the company in late 88. However, Flair's value wasn't appreciated by WCW president Jim Hurd in 1991, with Flair told to change gimmick, cut his hair, drop the world title, and take a pay cut. Of course, Flair was gracious and submitted to the Hurd's request. Well, either that or he told them where to stick his pay cut and was fired by Hurd, with the Nature Boy exiting with Big Goldie firmly around his waist. Flair then mailed the title to WWE, who paraded it on TV as Bobby Heenan promised that the real world's champion would be arriving in the promotion. Nate was owed in the region of $25,000 after paying an insurance retainer on the title belt, so wasn't prepared to let go of it until he was refunded. WCW eventually got the belt back, Flair got his dosh and likely blew it on watches, shoes and vodka, and went on to win the WWF Championship at Royal Rumble 92.